I'm Marcel Neville. Time now for Sunday House Call. And I'm Eric Shun. Welcome as always. Joining us, Dr. David Samadi, Chairman and Professor of Urology at Lenox Hill Hospital and Chief of Robotic Surgery there. Morning. And Dr. Mark Siegel, Professor of Medicine at NYU's Langone Medical Center, also author of The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness and Health. Good to see you both, Doc. Good to, Great see, to you. see you. Doctors, good to see you as always. We begin with a major new development that has to do with prostate cancer. There's an analysis of more than a dozen studies, and they show that prostate cancer patients apparently do better with surgery versus radiotherapy, especially with men who have localized prostate cancer. They say the findings show that patients treated with radiation over surgery were twice as likely to die from prostate cancer and about one and a half times more likely to die sooner, they say, than those treated by surgery. Someone who knows all about this is Dr. Samadhi, who is a world-renowned prostate surgeon. So I, I imagine or presume you would tilt towards surgery or do you also do both? Well, Eric, this is actually great, big news that got a lot of attention this week. And we've been waiting for studies like this because when men are diagnosed with prostate cancer, it could be very confusing. Do I go for radiation? Do I go for surgery? And everybody has a neighbor who's done something and tell them this is the way to go. But now based on this study, and maybe we can put that slide up again, you can see that the people who went for radiation had twice as likely of dying from prostate cancer than surgery. Now, sometimes when as a surgeon you recommend surgery, it looks like you're basically promoting or doing what you're good at. But the truth is that with any cancer, surgery is the first line of treatment. Why? With surgery, you would get the accurate staging. How much cancer do you have? Has it gone to surrounding tissues? And the follow-up after surgery is very easy because the PSA has to be always zero. People are now, as a result of marketing, a lot of ads out there with CyberKnife, and they call it robotic radio surgery, which is not surgery, it's all radiation. They fall into the trap of this radiation as a first line of treatment, and if the cancer comes back, you really can't do surgery or very difficult to do surgery after radiation. Yeah, you can't do it's, surgery It's after important radiation. for people to know that when you choose radiation yeah. as a first line of treatment, surgery after radiation is very difficult, but when do I use radiation? I like radiation as a backup plan after surgery, and after. that's important, yes. Quick question, I, I would think uh, that surgery is better because uh, radiation is so harsh on the body. However, what about the notion that some patients may think, you know, if I get myself cut open in going for the cancer, it just adds to the problem and exposes my system to more problems? Well, that question actually comes up, and people think that, you know, would I have uh, cancer spread or would I get incontinence and impotence? And Arthel, the answer to all of this is really depends on the person behind, experience of the surgeon, and in the hands of high volume surgeons, in the continence is close to 95, 97%. We've come a long way. Sexual function is somewhere between 50 to 80 percent, depending on your experience. So when you have prostate cancer, you want to go to centers of excellence, talk to your doctor, how much volume, are you doing robotics, are you doing open, and, and you can get a lot of good information and see what your sense is. Mark, what do you tell your patients? I mean, do you talk about seeds? Do you talk about surgery? Do you, do you send them right up, put them in a car and send them up to his office right away? <laughs> that's, the, that's plan B. Look, I want to start with the idea that there's 221 cases, 221,000 new cases a year, wow. and 27,000 men die of this. There's a 16% chance, Eric, that you or I are going to have prostate cancer in our lifetimes. So when, pa when, doctor, when patients come to me, I got to worry about that. 16% chance, but only 3% chance they're going to die of it. Here's another important statistic. If you've got it and it gets outside of your your prostate, the chances become only 30% that you're going to live five years. If I get it before it leaves your prostate, it's almost 100% chance you're going to live five years. That's where David comes in. I like the PSA because it helps me be aware that it may be there. You know, if, what, you know it, what doctors do? I, 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 they give you your PSA number. You guys are always asking me, what's your PSA number? I don't know. They give it to you like you go once a year. They should give it to you to show you what happens all year. The, the that's why we call you Dr. Sean, because that's exactly what good doctors should be doing. Not reacting to a number, Eric. Your point, they should be following a trend. And if the trend is up, and you can't figure out why the trend is up, it's not a large prostate, it's not an infection, then I'll say, look, maybe I better send the patient. What's a good number? What should you look at? Four is the cutoff. If the number is above four and the patient is above 50 years old, then we start screening at 40. But if the patient's above 50 and their number's above four, I start to worry. Okay. Then I send the patient to David. David decides whether to do a biopsy or not. If the biopsy is positive, he then has to decide with the help of genetics, MRI, whether to remove the prostate or not. But one final point, if the prostate has to come out, 
the best way to do it is with the least amount of trouble possible. That's why we look, if, if a robotic prostate surgeon like Dr. Samadhi has a lot of experience, then they're more likely to be able to get the prostate out with less side effects, which is what matters to me as an internist. You mentioned genes, Dr. Siegel. Dr. Samadhi, is there a genetic component to who's predisposed to having prostate cancer? Yes, there are, and we use them actually in the practice, whether it's genetic tools that we use or MRI images studies to decide uh, who should really go for surgery and who should go for radiation. The bottom line is one size fits all is not going to work and you have to select your patients well and there are young guys that I may say that you're not a good candidate or you are a good candidate. So individualized care is the best way to go. But going back to what we were talking about, one of the things that the long term effect of radiation is and a lot of people may or may not know is that there's a small chance of secondary cancer. You can get cancer from radiation bladder cancer, rectal cancer, and people need to be aware of this. Now that men are living longer and longer, those side effects are important, and sometimes when you get this hormonal therapy and Lupron shots with radiation, that can affect your uh, osteoporosis, that can affect your heart, so be wise, and that's why we always bring people to this prostatecancer911.com for free consult. If you're diagnosed with prostate cancer and you're confused and you don't know what to do, as a way to give back, not to just Fox News audience, but to everybody out there, call in or send your information and we will give you free consultation as a way to give back. I was going to mention it. You should be very proud of that. <laughs> so Thank I'm glad you, you did.